Hi Year 5, um, we are going to be starting a new book today because we've finished The Firework Maker's Daughter. It's called Cosmic and it's by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Um, if you haven't already done your English work for Monday, you need to make sure that you do that first because the, the work is to do with making a prediction about what you think this book and the story will be about based on the, the front cover and the blurb. Um, so today I'm going to start reading the very, very first chapter of Cosmic. It will take us some time because it's a much lengthier book than The Firework Maker's Daughter. Um, there will be some differences in the sort of the genre of the book um, and, and some of the themes, but I do think, and I haven't read the book, I'll be reading it with you, but I do think that as we're reading it, we may be able to make some comparisons and there might be some similarities um, in terms of some of the themes um, discussed in the book um, and sort of covered in the book. So I'll start with the very first chapter of Cosmic. I'm not exactly in the Lake District. Mum, Dad, if you're listening, you know I said I was going to the South Lakeland Outdoor Activity Centre with the school? To be completely honest, I'm not exactly in the Lake District. To be completely honest, I'm more sort of in space. I'm on this rocket, the infinite possibility. I'm about 200,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. I'm all right-ish. I know I've got some explaining to do. This is me doing it. I lied about my age. I sort of gave the impression I was about 30. Obviously, I'm more sort of 13-ish on my next birthday. To be fair, everyone lies about their age. Adults pretend to be younger. Teenagers pretend to be older. Children wish they were grown-ups. Grown-ups wish they were children. It's not like I had to try very hard, is it? Everyone always thinks I'm older than I really am, just because I'm tall. In St. Joan of Arc Primary, and the teachers seem to think that height and age were the same thing. If you were taller than someone, you must be old, older than them. If you were tall and you made a mistake, even if it was only your first day, you got, you should know better, big lad like you. Why? By the way, why should a big lad know better just because he is big? King Kong's a big lad. Would he know the way to the toilet block on his first day at school when no one had told him? No, I don't think he would. Anyway, a few hours back, the infinity possibility was supposed to complete a routine manoeuvre and basically it didn't. It rolled out of orbit, wrecking all the communication equipment and now I'm very lost in space. I brought this mobile phone with me because it's got pictures of home on it. I've also got an audio diary function. That's what I'm talking into now. Talking makes me feel less lonely. Unless you get this message, you won't know about any of this because this is a secret mission. They said that if it goes wrong, they're going to deny all knowledge of it. And us. There's five of us on board. The others are all asleep. Um, so immediately, lots and lots of questions. We've been introduced to the narrator. The book's written in first person. Um, we know that the narrator's in space and we're getting some clues on how they've ended up in space. So have a little think about how the narrator's mind should be part of this um, sort of space adventure. Can you believe that, by the way? We're in a rocket, spinning hopelessly out of control into forever. And what is a chosen, chosen course of action? A nap. When we get got the manoeuvre just slightly wrong, just slightly enough to make us completely doomed, they all scream for about an hour and then they dozed off. I can't sleep. I can't get comfortable in sleeping bags because they're always too small for me. Plus, I think if I stay awake, I might have an idea and save us all. That's why I'm recording this on my Drax phone. If I do get home, I'm going to give it to you and then you'll understand how I ended up in deep space when I said I was going pond dipping in the Lake District. And if you are listening to this though, and you are not my mum and dad, you're probably a pointy-headed, 90-legged, sucker-footed alien, in which case, can I just say, hello, I come in peace, and if you happen to have the technology, please post this phone to Mr. and Mrs. Digby, 23 Glenarm Close, Brutal, Liverpool, 22, England, the Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, etc., if it's not too much trouble. So... That's the end of um, chapter one. It's almost immediately starting in the middle of action. And um, I predict that there'll be a bit of a flashback, but we'll get to know a little bit more about the narrator. Um, and even though he's doomed, um, it's interesting how the writer has and the author has to use 
a, a lot of comedy and it's quite funny and they've used humor um for that sort of comic relief um whilst in the middle of this adventure tomorrow i'll be reading um chapter 2t